Uh, at the very outset, I must say, as a member of the MEP, as a pioneering party uh, in the formation of the foreign policy of this country, that we are very much, very much for the non-aligned policy and to continue with the, to also continue as, you know, friends only uh, international uh, relations policy because we should never uh, invest uh, or intend in taking sides uh, uh, in, in the global um, political scenario. Therefore, at the very outset, we must condemn any kind of inhuman, barbaric uh, killings or assassinations done under the pretext of uh, li uh, bringing liberty or liberation to a certain section of community. Therefore, uh, at the very outset, uh, we must clearly state that this government uh, will continue the non-aligned and friends with all policy and continue uh, the strength, the, the policy, foreign policy that we have strengthened over the last few decades because it, throughout history we have seen Sri Lanka has succeeded only in, in continuing this non-aligned policy uh, whenever we were in, uh, in, you know, in crossroads where we have to make decisions whether to continue uh, <coughs> in, the, um, uh, in the global arena. Having said that, I must also congratulate the Honorable Foreign Minister and his able team uh, under the leadership of His Excellency the President uh, for having been able to negotiate and win support from so many different sectors across the world, uh, especially during a time when Sri Lanka is faced with a grave economic crisis, uh, officially bankrupt for about 16 months uh, or more of the, uh, in the past few months, and we have been able to more or less get support from all quarters across the world. Therefore, uh, it is our duty to thank the, uh, the countries that have gone out of their way to support and assist Sri Lanka uh, during this course of period, especially uh, our regional uh, neighbors, uh, India, uh, Pakistan, and other countries in the SAC region, uh, China, Japan, and the Paris Club, EU, and also the Western uh, support that has been extended towards, on, towards Sri Lanka uh, on humanitarian grounds uh, to make sure that we sail in, through the turbulent times into uh, a more uh, 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 manageable uh, um, situation. Now, having said that, I must also congratulate the Foreign Office. I think they're extremely busy the, throughout, around the year, uh, doing their extreme best to somehow uh, bring Sri Lanka uh, I I into a more uh, stable situation. Therefore, I would like to propose as a member of the uh, uh, External Affairs, uh, International Relations uh, Sectoral Oversight Committee member that Parliament maybe should take interest in developing uh, uh, a foreign office, a Parliament foreign office, maybe with the c uh, collaboration of the Kadargama Centre, which is now at the uh, able hands of a former secretary who has uh, been a career diplomat, uh, maybe to create new synergies. Because we need, there are quite a number of large segments that are outside the Foreign Service and Foreign Office who can actually help uh, in an immense way to re renegotiate terms of our treaties, a able people who are globally recognized uh, for the contributions they have made in the international arena, uh, chambers and other outfits that, uh, that should, uh, and also the emerging uh, academics and uh, students of international relations, uh, I think we have about three different faculties in the country coming out. Uh, I think Parliament should uh, provide a platform uh, together with the uh, Kadiragam Institute to develop a, a foreign office uh, for international relations uh, in the uh, complex of this situation. Therefore, I think 
uh, as parliamentarians, we must uh, take a better interest in developing our friendship associations. Uh, in the last one year, I know, quite a few friendship associations have done their extreme duty to build br uh, new bridges, bridges that never existed before. Bridges that have never been even thought of before. Because it, it was a crisis time, and every parliamentarian contributed in this uh, effort towards building bridges. And I think uh, there is a lot of, lot of capacity among the parliamentarians, uh, maybe with uh, proper guidance and support from the Kadiragama Center, that a new office uh, should be set up uh, uh, with Parliament. Um, there is one, one or two areas that I wanted to also add few thoughts. One is one of our key ambassadors uh, in the international arena is not properly uh, being tapped or recognized. That is the ambassador of Ceylon Cinnamon. Ceylon Cinnamon can not only uh, be a trade commodity that can bring a lot of revenue to the country, but it is an ambassador that, ha that can give access to over 25, 30 countries and territories of the Hispanic world where it is a, it is a part and parcel of their culture, uh, where it can create avenues to uh, uh, attract for over 500 million of the world population, but we, for so far, have not embarked on this mission. Uh, the Friendship Associations of Parliament have been arguing for a mission in Madrid for the last decade. I think the first, first uh, resolution was adopted in the Parliament almost a decade ago, but for 10 years or more, we have not been able to even set up a trade office in Madrid, Madrid being the capital of the Hispanic world. And this is uh, something, I think, uh, you know, food for thought, uh, where, uh, where there are so many other areas that I would uh, wish to talk upon, but as we are constrained by time of limited 10 minutes, we have to, um, uh, you know, touch upon the critical issues. One other area is we, we look back the last 12 months of the year, uh, two out of the richest three people in the world has invested uh, US dollars 62 billion in the uh, satellite systems of the, uh, of the global positioning systems. Why? because it has a key role to play in the, in the coming years and decades of international relations. Otherwise, no individual uh, group will invest $62 billion. It is for navigation, yes, but it is also for climate. It is also for communication. It is also for international defense systems. And I am very unfortunate, I have to say, that I, obviously the office would have been a busy place in the last 12 months. Uh, but unfortunately, Sri Lanka being a pioneering signatory of this Under treaty of, of the UN USA, United Nations Office for Outer Space Agency, in, in, uh, uh, in um, uh, Austria, Vienna, we are just five minutes away from the headquarters, and as one of the honorary citizens of Sri Lanka was a pioneer in this sector, but we have not actually tapped into the, uh, the vast areas that we could develop relations on. This is a critical area. This is a critical area for international relations of the next coming uh, uh, years and decades. But our uh, that is why I said maybe the Parliament Foreign Office can uh, relate uh, to these issues much uh, frequently and with more synergy, especially with um, uh, Arthur C. Clarke Centre and Garmini Korea Centre. Uh, you know, Garmini Korea was a pioneer in the uh, southern south-south discussion, uh, in the trade, uh, developing the new trade re regulations for the world. We didn't see uh, we didn't see compassion coming through uh, during the COVID period to small countries like us. Uh, the, the trade regulations, the shipping uh, formulas continued to make profits in thundering amounts. Uh, as, a for, as a president of an overseas country mentioned, that it went over even thousand percent of pro profits. But we have not been able to develop the southern uh, discussion and also extend into uh, the areas that where Sri Lankans have in the past contributed immensely in developing. The one other area is law of the sea, where our top diplomat Amara Singh made an immense contribution. Uh, but the laws, 
have changed over the last 30, 40 years, but the, but the Sri Lanka Parliament has not been made the necessary amendments to fit to the oh, present day's, day's regulation. Honorary member, I'm winding up. I just wanted to congratulate the Honorable President for taking uh, a very uh, important uh, step towards the climate challenge, taking um, the entire, winning the support of the entire international arena on this regard. This is a matter that will affect Sri Lanka in all, in all accounts. And that is not just with the ocean waters and the agriculture, but in, in all accounts. And I think uh, the president has taken an important lead and put Sri Lanka back on the map where Sri Lanka should be giving leadership in the international arena. Because Sri Lanka, in the past 75 years, as well as in the long history of running into thousands of years, had shown uh, in, uh, leadership in the international arena. And I think. Uh, this should be congratulated, and um, I, I, I would like to wind up by thanking uh, for allocating this time uh, during this important uh, debate. Thank you.